with this cycle time, and then C is going to do M1, M3, M4, M2 with this cycle time, right? Which means that uh, if you get realized about this first part, right? Part A, B, and C is doing M1 at the same time, but with a different cycle time. So eventually, as I mentioned you to some of you, we could do this if then else, you know? But the problem of that is that uh, if we have many parts, that if then else could be very long, and then centrally not too much effective. So witness can support us with those things that uh, we can use those internal attributes. So we will learn to use this root function, which is an, an internal attribute that every part will carry in the model. Right, so whenever the part will be in any station or any machine, uh, we will ask for the root function, and we just need to go to that section, and then the root function uh, will tell us where to go or what to do. So that's why it's very useful. So we define parts. We have part A, B, C, and D. We to change the name. This is A. This is B. This is C and this is D, right? We're going to put them a little bit together. There, there, and there. I want to also want to change the graphics just to make them look better. So I'm going to take the description. Uh, right, this could be red, like that. That's fine. This could be like that. It's very good to try to uh, display the description because remember that the most important thing is to be able to validate the model. So once the model is validated, is when you can add more graphics. Actually, you can download picture from internet, let's say a plane, a car, a tool, anything, but uh, that won't be useful if you don't have the model validated. So that's why I like to display first the description to see where the parts are moving in a, in a very easy way. So, let's say this, so this could be this color, and fine, very quickly, I could do this, right, and the last one, oops, I'm going to display the description, and the green color, like that. All right, so I have my three parts. I know that the first three are active, that's what I know. And part D is going to be passive because it's going to be created inside of the model. So I need to place machine one, two, three, and four. So they're going to be very well, like that. Very simple. Right, so this one is going to be, just to make it simpler later on, it's going to be M. Sorry, and two, and three, and four. Then I have buffer B two, B three, and B four. B three and B four. And finally, we have the machine M five. Just like that, right? Normally, um, when I also, uh, a good advice for validating your model, that instead of sending parts directly to ship, when they finish, I like to send them to a buffer. Because in that way, I can see uh, if the parts are really going to an end, and I, and I can see them, right, displayed in the layout of the simulation. Otherwise, you will just miss it, and the only way for realize that the model is working is just going to your report. But maybe for the validation model, it's good to see in a real-time basis that if the model is working or not. So now we know that part A is going to follow a route, and part B is going to do that as well, and part C is going to do that as well. And in, part, in machine M5, parts are going to be collected in a batch, and after that, we're going to create part D. Right. So if we have a look to the slides, we know that uh, the route is like this. So we have five stations, 
to consider for every part. So in the specification of the part, we see the label root. So then we need to define those five um, stage. So yes, we add five. One, two, three, four, five. The first one is M1, which is a cycle time of two. The second one, sorry, is uh, M2, the cycle time of four. The third is M3, cycle time of two. The fourth is M4, well, this is a coincidence that in this case is a sequence, three. And finally is B2. There. So we finish with part A. Part B, on the other hand, is another five stages. Right? The first destination is M1, with a cycle time of three. The second one is M2. Wait, cycle wait. Time. You do not oh, sorry, change yes, the streak. The second stage, thank you very much. Second stage. Uh, let me check. First stage is M1, cycle time 3, right? Second stage is M4, which is cycle time of two. 2. The third is M3, cycle time uh, 3, yes. Four is M2, cycle time of two, and five is the buffer three. Buffer and two. We, sorry? Oh. It's two, it's three. So the root for the part C, we need to add the stages. We start in M1. Cycle time of four, three, cycle time of two, three, is and four. four, cycle time of four, stage four is M2, cycle time of three, and finally, we go to the buffer B4, right? So in this way, what we've done is that uh, we have set all the information from the part. So every part knows where to go and know how they are going, to, or, or the, uh, the cycle time in every machine, right? So for doing that, I just need to use the information. So first of all, I need to push every part to their, um, to the, um, to the machines or to the stage which is they are related to. So, but uh, because I don't know by, by certain to which part they are or to which places they have been root, so I just need to tell to the system to push them to root and they will know where, where to go, right? So I do that with that one. So whatever part B is going to, is, is going to go, the system will let me know. Just like that. Right, and it's the same thing with the machines, because once the part A will be at M1, I need to push them to their corresponding route. And of course that uh, we have to do many things, so probably we're not able to remember all that. So let's use witness for helping us to do it. parts are going to move across the system with that route, but also the cycle time, which is this R cycle, depends also on your stage. So I need to use that information here, like this. So let's tell R cycle, R cycle, sorry. And then the machine will just will look at the root position in each of the stage and then will take the R cycle value. Like 
that like that you see so now the process is very standard so all I have to do if I want to do any modification I just need to change the information in here and that will be immediately replicated to the whole process making a very interesting model a very complex model really very simple to model right and this is, and this is very interesting to witness because you can change any process you can change anything but uh, if that information is just contained here in the root, then you can update your model very easily. So the other thing is that machine five uh, collect part from B2, B3, and B4 in any order. So I'm just going to pull part from them, from B2, B3, B4, and here I'm going to batch three parts. So as you can see that uh, the maximum part to be batched is batch mean, which means that uh, the value from batch mean is just replicated here. Right? I could put 3, 3, right? Or I could use batch mean just to avoid having this problem, this, this, this potential mistake between numbers. So in that, in that sense, that if, if I change this one to 5, this is going to be 5 as well, right? And when I finish, well, let's say that this cycle time is going to be 1. When I finish, I change all the parts to D and the description to D. You have to make sure that graphically you're going to lose like that. And to finalize, I'm going to push every single part to B5. <coughs> Is that clear, more or less? So you have to check if the model works fine. I'm going to run the model step by step. So I click the graphic. Let's make sure that this works. So step by step. So part A, B, and C should be arriving. Uh, of course, I forgot to define the arrival time of that, so you're going to do it, my, you're going to do it automatically, right? So part arriving. Sorry for the graphics. It's about the it's computer. Yes. So if you run this the most faster. So eventually that you see that only part A are arriving, by the way. We don't have part B or C. <coughs> that is because, as I mentioned, when you create the model on discrete event simulation, there is a list behind. So what I do when I said that the initial time is zero, and this one is also zero, and C is also zero, right? What I do is that I create a list at the same time for all the three arriving, but this is still a list. So the first one in the list has the priority. So that's why in your slide you see that I told you that uh, part B should arrive a little bit late, at zero one, and part C should arrive later than B maybe, just to give some space for them to arrive. So now you will see that part A, B, and C are arriving, actually. See? B is arriving, but for some reason those one got blocked, right? And this comes from the concept of operations management, that we have a capacity of your uh, workstation. So eventually a machine has only one slot available for processing parts. So what I need to do, because this is a root function, the root function says that, okay, if you are in M1, then you need to go to M2. But they don't care if the M2 machine is busy or not. They assume that the machine should be available. So I have to make sure that I can do enough space for supporting the combination of different routes. Because maybe the route from different parts are telling you to use the same machine at the same time. right? But they don't care if the machine is busy or not. So, but if they don't see that the rule is possible to be executed, then the, the model will get blocked. So that's why we need to use the internal function of witness, which is about the buffer for making more space. So I can do, let's say, seven. That means that uh, that machine will have seven parts inside, but of course that will be processed in one, one by one, but I, it, 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 it will still be available to, to uh, receive seven at the same time, in, and then put them in kind of an, uh, in an uh, internal queue inside. So just to make sure that this is going to be worked in every single machine. So I just put that rule in every machine, in the input rule. 
here, light here, and light here. There. So now the model should work fine. So part A, B, and C is arriving, and then uh, parts go to the different buffers in a sequence, and then when they are together, they are transforming in, in D, which means that, uh, imagine that I have a process in where I have to collect three different parts, right? I paint them, or I do something to them, I transform them, and then because of that, I put a label in a way that those parts will look different, because they, they look with, with, with a label that says maybe ready. So that's why I put them in green, all of them. I turn them to green. So I can count all the uh, finished goods that are ready to be um, sent to another supplier, to another customer, or maybe that could be sold. Because the queue is going to be very long, graphically I can update that. I can say that uh, let's display only 20, just to not be very, very long. But also, uh, update, but also I can display the number. So I can display the number in queue, the part queue, but instead of a, a queue, I can select a count. I can set the font, the color, so like that. So even if the queue stops, well, actually I could do it smaller, let's say six. So graphically it's going to show six, but numerically it's going to show more than that. Graphically, it's going to be six. Then it's not going to grow anymore, but numerically it's going to show more. For instance, and the final part is about using a resource. So we can view the design element. I can put a resource there. Say L1. There are many ways to use a labor, right? If you put here. Let's say um, L1 to all of them, for instance. Sorry. L1 here. All what you will do is that uh, you will be uh, calling a labor whenever a part will be in that machine. So the labor will be very busy eventually. This from the model, you see? so then the labels like that. In this light, right? In this light, what we have, we have a different way for calling the label, right? Because normally, if we do this in this way, we can set different things. So we can call the label with some one particular rule. So you can do it in both ways. You can use the label section, or you can use in the machine. The setup section, which means that the labor is going to be used, let's say here, when 10 operations uh, have been performed. For instance, let's say that uh, you run an activity or process, and then you have 10 parts, and after 10 parts, let's say you have to clean up the machine a little. Yes, you know. So the labor know that after 10 operations, that will be needed. So it's also very useful. And this is a very, very realistic process in where you can model now uh, a proper route, which is a sequence. You also, you know how to use a batch, you know how to use an assemble, you know the meaning of attributes, variables, you can display that. And the good thing is that uh, this also could be helpful for providing a solution in your assignment. So, is there any question about this model? You see that in the end, the model is very simple. You see, actually I've done it in less than 20 minutes, 25 minutes. But this is because you have practiced now, right? If we, have, if, we, if we would have started by this model, the first day, believe me, maybe you have struggled a little. But now you, are, you have more practice. So what I would recommend is that uh, you can still go to your examples, right? That, uh, as you know, are in C, uh, users, public, public documents, learning group, witness for team, um, exact, no, not there. It's in demo, English, examples. And in here, you have all the many examples. And actually, it's also the root function. 
missing some place here. Uh, let me see. Select rule. Uh, it's in some place here. This part of routing. This other example. And again, if then you would like to do something more realistic, you also have those very big models. And then that, and now you know how to uh, look inside, open the functions, and see how they work. Any comments, questions? Right. So, thank you very much.